Hello everyone. My name is Nilesh and in this video tutorial series we are going to learn Java sublets. Java sublets are part of enterprise Java specification and if you are planning to learn any web programming framework in Java like JSF, JRC or Spring Web MVC then remember that sublets are heart of this framework they are always running in backend so before you start doing any serious java web programming learning java servlets is absolutely mandatory but before even learning java web programming you should be knowing the foundations of web programming so in this video i'm going to talk about http protocol we are going to see what exactly the web server or web client is we will talk about the request response working in http protocol and we will also see why people call http as a stateless protocol so here we go http stands for hypertext transfer protocol and as you are aware the http is used for accessing web pages from the server every time you use browser and you start accessing the web pages you must have seen http colon or https colon let me tell you that http is application layer protocol in osi network stack and it depends on tcp protocol in a transport layer of course that brings a reliable communication in http but remember that http is designed to be much scalable so that the more number of users can connect to the server now as you get the idea about what is http protocol it's time to understand basically what the server is and what the client is a lot of time there is a confusion whether server is a program whether server is a machine or what exactly i would make it very clear server is a program that provides some service and client is another program that consumes the service a good example could be a database server it could be some dns server it could be some proxy server it could be some web server oh but the question is what is web server the web server is a program that enable hosting multiple web applications in it but what the web application is the web application is set of web pages and resources but these web pages can be either static web pages or dynamic web pages now what do you mean by static web pages static web pages are nothing but simple html pages which are kept on the server and whenever requested by the client they are as it is served to the client there is no processing done on the server side of course this is just similar to any other resources like js files css file image file or other icon file or whatever now what is the dynamic pages the dynamic pages are a bit different where the request comes from the client to the server the server is going to process the request it is running some program there which is going to generate some response and going to give it to the client now this kind of processing done at the server side through some programming language it could be java it could be c sharp it could be uh, php it could be python and many other options are there now you must have guessed it correctly that java web applications are nothing but where the server side processing is done in java programming language such java web applications 
are deployed in java web servers in general if you ask me about web servers some good examples are iis web server another good example is apache web server or nginx web server and there are many as far as java web servers are concerned the most popular choice is apache tomcat web server or jetty web server and again there are few more well you understood about the web server but what about web client web client are programs which are consuming these web applications but which are these web clients the most common web client is a browser so you are accessing all internet pages through your browser however nowadays even mobile is another prominent client lot of mobile applications they are talking to the back end servers to fetch the data and to submit the data not only that but also having another application talking to your web application is very common nowadays now let us jump into the details of http protocol as i was already telling you that the request is sent from the client to the server server is going to process the request and going to send the response back to the client this request response model is followed in this whole http protocol but what exactly the request and response contains let me just make it very clear that request and response contains only some header part and a body remember that http is hyper text transfer protocol so these headers are purely in the text format which you can refer through any browser plugins or the browser's debugger view let me just put in some details telling you what exactly the request object contains the request object contains the http protocol version it could be 1.0 1.1 it contains the server ip address and port on which my web server is running and it also contains the resource path on the server to which the client is making a request this request header also includes request method now in http protocol traditionally there are seven important request methods these are get post head put delete trace and options let me tell you in short about them the get request is used to get a web page from the server post request is used to submit the html form data to the server the head request tells the server just send me the response header don't send me the response body the put request is to upload a page a document onto the server while delete is to delete a document delete a resource from the server the trace is used for tracing the http request and the options is telling you out of these which request methods are supported by some url on the server of course there are few more request methods like connect that establish a two way communication channel with the server which is usually used with the proxies and also there is a patch request for updating the partial data on the server of course request method is not the only thing there are few more things there like the request body will have the data in different form it could be like xml format it could be like json format it could be the form data in a key value pair separated by the ampersand but this particular data is of how many bytes that is in form 
into the length header and also the data type is given in the contained type it can also contain something called as a cookies which is one of the state management mechanism and request header also includes the client information like ip address of the client or its browser agent and there are even more details now this request is sent to the server the server is going to process that request and going to produce the response this response includes again the http version 1.0 1.1 and it includes something called as a status code which indicates whether request is handled successfully or if there is any error let me tell you the important status codes first the important status codes over here is in range of 100 it is information whether any protocol switch is done in between or in range of 200 indicating it is success the most important one is 200 which represent status okay success or 201 which tells client that some resource is created on the server the status code in range of 300 indicate redirection again the important over here is 302 which is telling client that try to get the resource from another url or in range of 400 it indicate the client error some most commonly seen error is like 404 not found error or 403 is like a forbidden error the client is trying to access something for which it do not have permission also we have status code in range of 500 which indicate server error as you start with servlet programming you will see 500 internal server error many times but apart from the status code and its short text there is some more information some more information you see that the contained type is also there so whatever response you are sending back to the client you need to tell in header that what type of response is this the most popular response type would be text html if you are sending the web page to the client which is dynamically built from the server side processing or we can also send like text xml we also have application json which is very popularly used in rest services we have image jpg or image png to send the images we can also have some content type with respect to videos audios and so on now this request and response model if you have understood let me tell you something more interesting traditionally for each request the client opens a new socket connection to the server send the request the request is processed on the server the response is given back to the client and the connection the socket connection get closed for the next request again a new connection is open through which request is sent process at the server response is sent back to the client and the connection is closed that is the reason http is a connection less protocol in spite of it is built on the top of tcp protocol which is connection oriented because of this each request is a brand new request for the web server you visualize that just now you log in into a website and that was your first request after logged in you click on some link over there and that is entirely new request for the server and again you fill some form you fill it that and you submitted the form and that is again entirely new request for the server you please understand that now the server 
is not able to recognize whether the requests are coming from the same client or they are coming from the different different client of course if this is a web web application run then it will be very miserable so you have to maintain the information about the client in order to give better user experience this user information can be stored this client information can be stored either on the server side or client side if you are storing this information on the server side it is referred as server side state management and some typical examples are session or application and if you are maintaining the client information on the client side itself then it is referred as client side state management which is cookies hidden form fields session storage and there are few more now you understand that definitely there are pros and cons for each one because anything that you are storing on the client side is visible to client and possibly client can modify that can manipulate that and you putting everything on to the server side this is still dangerous because it is too much of load you are keeping it for the server of course as we will continue further with the java servlet tutorial we will see how this state management objects are to be used into java servlets let me make it very clear that whatever we learn in this video is about http protocol this is absolute fundamentals of web programming and before you start learning web programming in any programming language let it be python let it be c sharp let it be java or for that sake any other language please don't forget to understand and digest these basics i hope you found this useful stay tuned for further tutorials on java servlet thank you very much